It's one of the most controversial and rapidly growing sectors in the aerospace industry. There are new revelations tonight about the CIA drone strike that mistakenly killed two hostages. It has this disadvantage of, of killing potentially innocent people. Cheap to manufacture in comparison to manned aircraft, they consume less fuel and can be launched into friendly territory to missions thousands of miles away. Left in the air for days on end at an altitude, which means they can't be seen by the naked eye. It's known but not widely disclosed that the military flies unmanned drone missions to hunt and kill uh, members of terrorist organizations. The basic premise of, of, of having robotics in, in the theater of warfare is to take risks, uh, risk a machine, uh, because the value of a human life is, is, is incalculable. Manufacturers in the U.S. and U.K. are working on the next stage of drone technology, unmanned combat aircraft. In 2006, engineers at U.S. based Northrop Grumman began working in collaboration with the U.S. Navy to create the X-47B, what they say is one of the most advanced military aircraft on the planet. The full stealth fighter is equipped with onboard computers that can not only take off and land unaided on moving aircraft carriers, but also perform in-air combat and reconnaissance missions. And then there's this. There we go. In April of 2015, Northrop released video footage of the X-47 cruising up to an aerial fuel tanker, docking, and autonomously refueling itself in flight. That came just days after the U.S. Naval Secretary stated the country's F-35 will almost certainly be the last crewed fighter aircraft the Navy will buy or fly. The Northrop Grumman's taken the lead and was awarded the contract to, to develop the X-47B, so the kind of system that could uh, have stealthy characteristics, have kind of some kind of deep range strike, you know, if, if, if that's the way that, that the Navy wants to go forward. So it's, it's really pushed the envelope in terms of tech development for, for, for UCAVs. And it creates efficiency. Northrop says four of the X-47Bs can be controlled by one single ground operator. But the X-47B isn't the only stealth combat drone in development. In August 2013, UK-based BAE Systems released video of Tyrannus, a highly classified drone demonstrator commissioned by the UK Ministry of Defense. It too says Tyrannus can undertake sustained surveillance, mark targets, deter adversaries, and also carry out strikes in hostile territory. And a similar pan-European system has been commissioned by Dassault Systems for the governments of France, Italy, Spain, and Sweden. In Europe, the, uh, the two main efforts to develop next generation technology are technology demonstrations, so proving out technologies and seeing what can be done uh, in the UCAV field. There's no end game for either of those, really. They're not leading on to any operational uh, platform, either of them but they will likely feed uh, into um, development efforts for, for, hopefully, for the European countries. The companies say the advantage of autonomous UCAVs means the aircraft is resistant to communications jamming systems in hostile territory. But despite all these advances, analysts are skeptical of a time when robots would ever truly conduct full combat missions without the supervision of human ground operators. As it stands right now, when a flying drone kills a terrorist, it's under control of a person who makes the decision under proper command and control authorities, and you can argue the finer nuances here. When we have robots making their own autonomous decisions to, in combat to kill other human beings, that's a completely different matter, and one for you know, people a lot smarter than me to wrestle with.